What would be the number one advice you would give to designers who are just beginning their career in UI design or UX design? So the number one piece of advice you would give to designers beginning their career in UI or UX design? Hmm. Anybody. Wow. The number one piece of advice. I'll jump in. Advice. Uh, if you're just starting your career, do a bunch of stuff. Do do a lot of different projects and get them out the door. Uh, so if they're if you don't have a job yet, do personal projects, but complete them and not just your website because doing your own portfolio website is a circle of hell that no one should have to do and it takes forever and it's not it's an awful awful thing. So don't do that. I mean, do that, but do other projects. Complete personal projects, especially ones that um, do good for somebody. Volunteer for Code for America, uh, uh, but get things out the door. It's the process of completing projects that will make you better. And that's true, honestly, of just about any field. And also read I'll, I'll, Yeah, I'll, uh, that, that's, that's excellent advice. So just do stuff, right? Real, real artists ship, in the words of Steve Jobs. Um, so I, I'll throw my, my two cents in here, too. I think if, uh, especially when it comes to UX design, if, if you're, again, this is something you've said, but it bears repeating, if you're not actually talking to users, then you're not doing UX design. Because so much, again, for, for folks who are new to this industry, there's a lot of talk about things like prototypes and wireframes and deliverables, and you, you can get stuck in the how of mm. we're doing this. And what, what am I supposed to be showing clients? And what am I supposed to? But again, it's the irony is so thick that I can taste it. It's the, if you're not actually talking to users, you're not doing UX design. So that would be my advice is um, just talk to users, talk to people. Uh, that would be my two cents. I guess I'll, I'll take something that I think is fundamental, fundamental to the book that, that I wrote. So disclosure uh, there, but it's um, try to be really aware of the assumptions that you're making at every step of a project, project and then challenge them. Um, a lot of things that happen in design, we sort of go on our gut instinct, we go on assumptions uh, that we don't even necessarily know we're making. So, you know, just sort of try to figure out like, what am I assuming as I write this? What am I assuming as I create this design? What am I assuming as I design this workflow? Then what if I'm wrong? What if I'm completely wrong about that? Or what if I'm only half wrong? Like, because there can be a lot of value in that. And, and certainly, uh, I agree with you, you should be talking to actual users because they will absolutely tell you, they will show you where your assumptions went awry. But if you don't have that, like if you're working on something for a personal project and there's nobody using it yet because you haven't built it, right? It's, it, 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 it has yet to make it into the world. You know, just try to, try to always identify your assumptions you know, and, and your unconscious assumptions. Like, try to ask yourself, what am I not asking myself because it's, it seems ludicrous or it seems taboo or it seems whatever. And then challenge those. Ask yourself, what if I'm wrong? If I'm, what if it's completely the opposite of what I'm assuming? I think that's a, that's, a, that's a thing that not a lot of people do. It's not really in our nature as humans to do. Uh, engineers and architects do it, but they were trained to do it. We're not really trained to do it. So if you can train yourself to do that, you're gonna have a big leg up on on doing really insightful design all the way down the line. Killer advice. If you had one thing, there is one thing that you would want to see in future projects from uh, people who are creating prototypes. Uh, what, what is that thing? What is the one thing that you would absolutely want to see in, in upcoming projects and that people in the audience can perhaps learn from? So um, what I like is I like curiosity. Um, and, and to expand upon that, it's more about um, the designers just completely having full awareness and understanding about what is trying to be accomplished and not being afraid to ask questions. Tracy's answer is so good and I second it in so many ways. And I guess I would elaborate upon it perhaps by mm -hmm. kind of reflecting on a younger version of myself. And I see it in, in uh, less experienced folks that I work with is the fear of asking questions because okay. you feel like your role is to be the expert. Yeah. Um, but the way that I like to position it, and I believe that I've picked this up from, um, from some reading, is 
is that the clients are the expert on their subject matter and their business and and you are the expert on design and so you have a conversation like adults and it it's more embarrassing to not ask an important question and then to not understand something fundamental downstream when you're presenting your work than it is to ask those questions up front so i i think my advice to younger uh younger designer or someone who's really looking to kind of uh, break through to the new level is to experiment with asking questions that seem really dumb or obvious. You feel like everyone else in the room knows the answer because uh, it's not uncommon that you do that. And then like people look at you and go, I was wondering the same thing. Thank you for asking. Right. Can I add one more thing to that? And which is just like, also educate your stakeholders because I'm not an expert in design. So understanding why you chose this type of component versus another and understanding the research behind it. Um, it's really important, especially if you're just passing a project off to a company. Um, if you're doing a consultant, consulting type work, um, like make sure that you want that product to be successful and that project to be successful, it can go in your portfolio, right? So make sure you educate them so that when they end up building it out, they, they understand the design concepts and why they're doing what they're doing. Cool. You both have been in positions where you're looking for jobs, but you've also been in positions where you are maybe looking to hire someone, specifically a front-end developer or a coder. And I'm curious to know, um, for those folks out there, or just for anyone in general, what, what sort of things in general or specific do you look for in someone who you know, might be looking for a job as a front-end developer? Like what, what's, what are the attributes that you're interested in? Um, I guess, you know, when, when I was running my agency, a lot of the interviews that we did, we mainly looked for interest and enthusiasm for, for the medium. Somebody who actually, you know, really, they weren't doing it just for a paycheck, they were doing it because they, there was something that spoke to them about working on the web, um, and they were excited to learn new things. You know, it, obviously, fluency with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, those things were important, but, you know, there was, I, I had no expectations that they were going to have, you know, the, the entire JavaScript, the definitive guide memorized and, you know, would be able to just write programs from scratch or what have you. You know, I, I think that's kind of, I don't know, I, I don't think that's necessary. There are so many resources out there to be like, I want to do this, what do I need to do? And I'd much rather have somebody that has a fluency with that and that knows, you know, knows the questions to ask in order to get to the, the thing that they need to implement in order to accomplish something that, that's just really passionate about the work that they're doing and that's super interested in doing things because they're going to they're gonna push themselves further. They're going to learn more. They're going to get better and better over time. And I think that's, that's a really key thing to, to have for, for somebody that, that you're working with. Um, and, you know, obviously a good team player is a huge huge thing as well because you want to you want to have somebody that's that's there to support everybody else in the in the group as well uh-huh. excellent okay uh, Jeffrey what's what those what are, are great things? I, I agree with all those things I also think um, so if somebody's a newcomer or a student or young uh, new to the field they don't have to be young in age but new to the field I look for excitement enthusiasm just like just like that um, because when I was teaching myself this stuff I thought it was the coolest stuff in the world and I would dream in 16 color gifs right I would actually dream I would see a sign and I would say how would I render that I would be, always be thinking I was boring as hell my girlfriend couldn't stand me but I was bo- but I I was obsessed with learning all that and so I look for that I look for, I look for someone who's passionate about these things and has ideas and then if they're a little more experienced I look for contributions have they given something to the community in some fashion do they write they don't have to be the greatest writer on earth but do they blog and, and if so what about are they repeating what other people say or are they or they do they have ideas um, if, do they contribute to a group blog? Have they made something for other people? Have they done? I mean, I work with a guy, Roland Dubois. He went, we weren't even working together at the time, but I said I want to really try. I have this idea for a design I'm doing, and I want to try tilting the type. And I know you can do that in CSS now, but I don't know if it's readable. He went and made a JS fiddle to just test it, and he said, "Well, here's what it looks like," and and he had little variations to show me, like, and I was like. We're not even working together, and this is, by the way, it's an experienced guy, right? That's a that's not a beginner, but but that wasn't his project at the time, 
and he dove in because he was passionate about it. That's an hour, and now we work together. Like I look at that and go, that's who I want to work with. Yeah. Someone who's more fired up about this than I am. Yeah. Right, and I'm pretty that, excited about it. That sounds like enthusiasm for those folks out there, enthusiasm way up on the top of the list, and also to, to show something cool that you've done um, so that uh, we know that you're telling the truth. <laughs> and if you haven't done anything cool, we have a contest for that. So uh, it'd be great to get uh, from both of you some some piece of practical advice that you might give a new uh, designer who's kind of looking to get into this responsive design stuff. And uh, we can start with anyone, but well, let's go with Karen, just because. Okay. I think that my advice for any designers, whether they're just starting out or mid-career, you really have to be committed to continually evolving and using new tools and being very comfortable learning new applications, new systems, new ways of working. And speaking as somebody who is very comfortable in the tools that I know well, I, I know how painful that can be. And you get used to doing something and you know you have a way of doing it. And and yet the web moves on. And I I think today you've seen a lot of designers adopting Sketch or InVision or other new prototyping tools. I think that content teams probably need to open their hearts to moving away from tools like Microsoft Word and uh, even even shifting to Google Docs for what it's worth. I think that that skill in and of itself, that willingness to constantly learn and evaluate new applications, new tools, new ways of working, um, openness to new process, I think to me that's what distinguishes a good designer from, from somebody who's going to wind up stuck in an older era. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent, nice. Uh, and Ethan, what kind of advice would you, would you have for folks yeah. out there? Um, something Karen said is something I've been thinking about a lot, which is you know just the the frequency and franticness of change on the web, and just all the new challenges that we have. You know, just working even just on a desktop only website seemed like they've been compounded by going responsive or focusing on mobile. Um, but you know, the, I, I really think that mobile was a big reset button for a lot of our practices, and I think we're still very much in the early days. So something I say to a lot of new designers now, or folks getting back into web design, is this is kind of the ideal time to start thinking about how you can be a little bit more device agnostic in building for the web. Mm -hmm. So I, I think start as modestly as you feel comfortable, like whether it's um, you know working on a static mock-up in Sketch, maybe have a side-by-side -side small screen view of that same mock-up and you know, think about how the two actually relate to each other. Or if you're a front-end developer who's just learning about responsive layouts for the first time, grab a foundation, a CSS framework, and start thinking about not just how um, you can actually make a responsive layout work, but think about how that framework made some decisions for you and how it changes and adapts and maybe modify it a little bit to try to actually understand a little bit more deeply. Because ultimately, I mean, the tools that we're using today are going to go away in a couple months or a couple years' right. time, and they're going to be replaced with new tools. And I think the thing that you're trying to do as you are becoming a more responsive designer is establish some principles that are going to last, outlast the tools that you're using today. So you can actually define good responsive design for you, for your clients, for, for whomever in the years to come. Yeah.